Okay, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Slavek Solecki of Cornell University. I will be the moderator of the session. Uh, it is my pleasure to uh, introduce Natasha Dobrinen of University of Denver, moving to University of Notre Dame. And uh, she will talk on Ramsey theory of homogeneous structure. structures. Please, Natasha. Thank you very much, Slavek. Thank you everybody for being here, especially um, the SC Schrodinger Institute for hosting me live at the Set Theory Workshop in Vienna. It's nice to be in front of some friendly faces in person, as well as with everybody around the world. Oh dear, it's stuck. Um, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to start with the pigeonhole principle, which st states that if you have more pigeons than you have holes and every pigeon is placed into a hole, then at least one of the holes will have two pigeons. So here's a picture of our pigeonhole principle for this case of nine, 10 pigeons in nine holes. The infinite pigeonhole principle says that if you have infinitely many marbles and they're placed into finitely many buckets, then some bucket will contain infinitely many marbles. Or stated another way, if you color the natural numbers into finitely many colors, then at least one of the color classes will be infinite. So for example, if you have red and blue natural numbers, then there will be either infinitely many red ones or infinitely many blue ones. So the pigeonhole principle is the beginning of how one does induction proofs to get stronger Ramsey theorems. And the finite Ramsey theorem uh, says that if you have m less than n and 2 less than or equal to r, and there's a p large enough, then there's going to be a p large enough so that for any coloring of the m element subsets of any set of size p into r colors, there is a subset of size n in which all of the m element subsets have the same color. So, as our quintessential example, if we're coloring pairs of, say, vertices, or you could think of that as coloring edges of a complete graph into two colors, and you want to find a monochromatic triangle, it's enough to start with six vertices with a complete graph, and then you are guaranteed to have a monochromatic triangle. All right, the infinite Ramsey theorem states that if you have M and R, and a coloring of the M element subsets into R colors, then there is an infinite subset N such that all of the M element subsets of N have the same color. So for a special case of M and R equaling two, we can think of this as coloring the edges of a complete graph on infinitely many vertices. And then Ramsey's theorem guarantees that there will be an infinite subgraph, which has all of the edges of the same color. So the point of this beginning is to show that although Ramsey's theorems are often stated um, just as set theorems, they also can be viewed as structure theorems, in this case for complete graphs. So this leads us to the question of which infinite structures carry analogs of the infinite Ramsey theorem. So one of the simplest structures, which is non-trivial, is the rationals as a dense linear order. The rationals have a pigeonhole principle because if you color the rationals into finitely many colors, there will be a subset in one color, which is again a dense linear order. So here dense linear order means that you are isomorphic to the original structure. However, if you try to color pairs of rationals and you want to find a subcopy of the rationals with one color, you would be sunk because of a special example due to Sierpinski. And this example hinges on enumerating the rationals in some increasing order. So take the rationals and list them as Q0, Q1, Q2. And then use this rational ordering as opposed to this enumeration to create a two coloring right here. So we color a pair QI, QJ red 
if both of the orders agree, and we color the pair blue if the orders disagree. And if we say we take a copy of the rationals where we have enumerated them, let's say zero is Q0, negative a half is Q1, then you will see that you have red pairs, you have blue pairs, and this coloring is unavoidable in the sense that no matter how hard you try or how cleverly you try to take a substructure, a subset of the rationals, which again is a dense linear order, both of these color classes are going to still persist. Okay, but this is not as bad as might seem at first, because in the case of the rationals, one is still able to find some bounds for the number of colors um, for a finite coloring of some M element subsets of the rationals. So building on work of Galvin, who showed that Sierpinski's example is as bad as it can get, and Laver, who showed that upper bounds exist on the number of colors for any finite set, Devlin showed that given M, if you color the M element subsets into finitely many colors, there will be a subcopy Q prime, which forms again a dense linear order in which all of the M element subsets take no more than this bound of colors. Okay. And what Devlin proved, which was especially hard, was to show that this bound is optimal. So, if M is one, we're coloring singletons in the rationals. We have the pigeonhole principle. That means that you can find a dense linear suborder where all the, all the rationals in there have the same color. This is Sierpinski's coloring and Galvin showing that it's as bad as it can get. And then when you color triples of rationals, the best into finitely many colors, the best you can hope for is to get down to 16 colors on a sub. Uh, subcopy of the rationals. Um, this constant CI uh, comes from the tangent function. And the reason it, it comes into play here is because the way that um, these numbers of these number bounds for the rationals can be counted is using an inductive argument on certain sorts of trees that we'll talk about in a bit. And it turns out to be connected with the tangent function. All right, so that brings us to finite structural Ramsey theory. And then we'll juxtapose that to infinite structural Ramsey theory. So we'll say for structures A and B that A is less than or equal to B if and only if A embeds into B, which means there's a copy of A inside of B. And then we'll use this notation, B choose A, to denote the set of all copies of A and B. So the finite structural Ramsey property is saying that some class of structures satisfies the finite Ramsey theorem. So in this case, we're looking at some A, which is a sub, which is embeddable into B. We're coloring the copies of A inside of some C that's large enough so that having fixed your number of colors, you can find a subcopy of B and C where all of the copies of A have the same color. So there's been a lot of work done on this um, finite structural Ramsey theory, beginning with Abramson and Harrington for um, finite ordered graphs and also Neschatrill and Riddle. This was a seminal paper of Neschatrill and Riddle, which gave you that free amalgamation, ordered free amalgamation classes have the Ramsey property. So if, if this is too much notation for you, you can just hold on to these two examples. The classes of finite ordered graphs have the Rams, Ramsey property and the finite ordered triangle free graphs have the Ramsey property. So these are two special cases of this Neschatrill Riddle theorem. Okay, so many people in combinatorics are used to coloring vertices or edges. And today we're interested in coloring copies of a fixed graph. So let's say we have a graph A, we have a graph B, and we might be coloring copies of A inside of B. Maybe this copy is red, and maybe this copy is blue. 
and maybe you have another copy which is red again. And we're looking to find places where we have as few colors for these copies of A as, as possible. So finite structural Ramsey theory is connected with homogeneous structural Ramsey theory. And a structure big K is homogeneous if every isomorphism between two finite induced substructures extends to an automorph automorphism of the big structure K. And a structure K is universal for a class of structures, script K, if every structure in script K embeds into big K, or meaning that every structure in script K has a copy inside of big K. So homogeneous structures can be obtained from Freisei classes of finite structures by taking a Freisei limit. So the point is that there's this interconnectedness between classes of finite structures and homogeneous structures. And um, some examples of homogeneous structures include the rationals, which we've seen, because if you take any finite, any isomorphism between two finite sublinear orders of the rationals, you can extend it by a back and forth argument to a whole automorphism of the rationals. The radograph is the graph on infinitely many vertices which can be obtained by taking your pairs of vertices and flipping a coin to decide if you have heads um, put an edge or tails you have no edge. The radograph is also a homogeneous structure and every finite graph and even every countable graph embeds into it. So it's also universal for finite and countable graphs. The triangle-free Henson graph is the analog of the radograph for triangle-free graphs, and it's homogeneous and universal for countable and finite triangle-free graphs. And why we're looking here is because homogeneous structures are very good environments for doing Ramsey theory because they contain lots of copies of any of its finite substructures. So given this Freise correspondence, which I mentioned a minute ago, you can go back and forth between the age of a homogeneous structure and the homogeneous structure itself. And this makes it a great environment for Ramsey theory. Okay. So let's let K be an infinite homogeneous structure. Then we say that K has finite big Ramsey degrees if for each finite substructure A of K, there is an integer t so that whenever you color the copies of A inside of K into any number of colors, it could be 10, a million, there is a subcopy K prime in which all of the copies of A have no more than t colors. So the big Ramsey degree of A inside of K, which is denoted by t of AK, is going to be the least such positive integer t. Now, it was proved by Huorth that if you have a Freisei class that has its corresponding homogeneous structure with more than one automorphism, then there will be a finite structure which has big Ramsey degree greater than one, possibly infinite. So this tells us that it makes sense to look at these things, that big Ramsey degrees are really what it means to look at infinite structural Ramsey theory. Oh, and the big refers to the fact that our ambient structure is infinite, whereas small Ramsey degrees are doing weakenings of Ramsey property for finite structures. So Kekris, Pestoff, and Todorcevich's um, seminal paper showed that there's a correspondence between Freisei classes of finite structures with the Ramsey property and extreme amenability of the automorphism group of its associated homogeneous structure. And in that paper, they ask many questions, which has motivated a lot of research since then. And in particular, they ask which homogeneous structures have big Ramsey degrees. And another question they ask is about the topological dynamics corresponding to the big Ramsey degrees. 
Now, the second question um, Andy Zucker looked into, and he found one direction of a correspondence between big Ramsey structures, which means you have finite big Ramsey degrees, which cohere in, in a very nice way between smaller and larger structures, and the automorphism group of K having a unique universal completion flow. So big Ramsey degree results up to 2010. Um, there were many, but on the other hand, maybe not so many for 80 years of work. And you can see there are a lot of results on vertex colorings, which is called indivisibility. There was a lot of work on edge colorings. And these red highlighted results are where a complete understanding of the big Ramsey degrees of all finite structures is, is known. So beginning with Devlin's result, which we talked about a while ago, and then Laflamme, Sauer, and Viksanovich proving, uh, characterizing the big Ram Ramsey degrees for the radiograph and other similar, similarly constructed um, binary relational homogeneous structures. And then these were computed via an algorithm made by Gene Larson. And then the dense local order, S2, where all of the big Ramsey degrees were computed. So these red highlighted results all have an, a, a similar approach to them. And so the approach is in four basic steps. The first step is to use an infinite binary branching tree to represent a universal structure into which your structure of choice embeds. Secondly, is to utilize a theorem due to Millikan for strong subtrees. Thirdly, is to construct a diagonal antichain which represents your structure because inside of step two, you're really working with a universal structure. And then here we want the homogeneous structure. And then fourth, we're going to do a lower bound argument to show that the upper bounds you found are actually exact. Okay, so I will talk about Millikan's theorem and about diagonal antichains because those are central to all big Ramsey degree results. So Millikan's theorem says that if you're given n greater or equal to one and you color all of the n strong subtrees of the binary branching infinite tree into finitely many colors, then there is going to be an infinite strong subtree which in which all of the n strong subtrees have the same color. So an n strong subtree means that it looks like two to the n, like the binary splitting tree of height n. So for example, here is a three strong subtree. We have levels one, two, and three. And for every node which is not terminal in this subtree, it splits. And here is another copy of a three strong subtree. And so Millikan's theorem says, if you color all of these sorts of subtrees, you can find an infinite binary branching strong tree in which all of these have the same color. So remarks, halpern loikli theorem forms the pigeonhole principle for the proof of the Millikan theorem. And the halpern loikli theorem is a theorem which is coloring products of level sets of these trees. And it, it, it's, it's a, non, a very, very non-trivial result, which has had a big impact both in logic and Ramsey theory. And it was, it was formulated as a key step in halpern levy's proof that the Boolean prime ideal theorem is strictly weaker than the axiom of choice over ZF. Secondly, Second big notion from those four steps is diagonal antichains. So an antichain is a set of incomparable nodes, and it is called diagonal if any two nodes in its meet closure have different lengths. So here is an antichain in the binary branching tree, the green nodes. And if we take its meet closure, which means we are going down downwards closure, finding where these meet. These are these two circled nodes. 
Then every level of this green subtree has at most one splitting node or one terminal node and never two at the same time. So that's the notion of diagonal antichain. So in Devlin's theorem, when he counts up the number, finding the, the big Ramsey degree for colorings of n sized subsets of the rationals, counting up these diagonal antichains representing a subcopy of the rationals inside of the binary branching tree gives you exactly this number. So the, the, the second key, key theorem using this methodology of these four steps um, was due to Laflamme, Sauer, and Viksanovich, where they showed that um, they, they characterized all of the big Ramsey degrees for any finite graph inside of the Rado graph. And in that case, the, the, the big Ramsey degree is exactly the number of similarity classes of diagonal antichains, which are representing this graph G. So what they do to, to utilize Millikan is that they put an edge relation on the binary branching tree of height omega. And then that the binary branching tree with that edge relation is a universal graph. They do the Ramsey theory there and then pull out a homogeneous structure at the end. Okay, so um, in that Kekris, Pestov, and Todorcevich paper from 2005, they mentioned a bunch of open problems. One of them was to find the big Ramsey degrees uh, for the Henson graph. So the Henson graph is the triangle free analog of the Rado graph. And there were previous results on this. There was a result of Komiat and Riddle finding a pigeonhole principle. And there was a result of Norbert Sauer finding that the big Ramsey degree for coloring of edges is exactly two. But the, the methodology broke down there because Millikan's theorem is basically unable to handle forbidden substructures. So that piqued my interest. And um, I'd worked on it in 2012 unsuccessfully. And then back when I was uh, visiting Cambridge for the Newton Institute special, special semester on set theory, um, I started to think, okay, let's try. We know the end of the uh, we know the end of the story for the rationals and the radiograph. Let's try starting there with an enumerated structure, knowing that we're going to need diagonal antichains at the end. And then let's try the big machinery force because if you don't know that a result is possible, then you should try forcing <laughs> because <clears throat> if you can't make it happen by forcing, then you're not going to be able to make it happen at all. And there was a, there was a, a precedent for this, which is Harrington's forcing proof of the halpern loikley theorem. Okay, so then the methodology in this paper um, is to develop some new thing called coding trees, which start with a Henson graph, which is enumerated, and then reprove or develop a new Millikan style theorem for these trees, and then develop a new notion of envelope. Okay, so on the left here, we have an enumeration of the vertices of a triangle free Henson graph. You can see there are no triangles. Okay. And on the right here, we're taking the tree of one types. Or you, if you don't know what that is, you can just think of the tree of possible extensions. Okay. So V0, the vertex, is represented by this coding node C0. And you can either have an edge or a non-edge with V0. So we represent that as edge going to the right non-edge going to the left, x is a variable. And then v1 is represented by c1 because it has an edge with c0. c1 does not extend to the right because extending to the right, any node over there would have both an edge with v1 and an edge with v0, but we already have an edge between v1 and v0, so that would make a triangle. So. The point is that if you start with an enumeration of the structure that you care about, and it gives you the tree of possibilities, 
then you can be sure to get a tree that's not going to run into trouble. Right, we're never going to get triangles here. So, okay, here is a subgraph of our triangle free Henson graph. And it is represented by these six coding nodes and the tree below it. You can see this is not a diagonal anti chain. We can actually get rid of these configurations. And then there is a red, say we have a red graph, subgraph here. That's represented by these coding nodes over here and this subtree. Um, this actually is a diagonal anti-chain. So this would be one of, one of the similarity types that we're left with at the end. Okay, so you can do um, forcing and, and get some Ramsey theory for these sorts of objects. But um, in order to directly recover Komiat and Ruddle's pigeonhole princ principle for vertex colorings, we needed to go to diagonal coding trees. Okay, so this is a subtree of the previous tree. So thinning through, you can make a tree of this sort and also making sure that it represents a Henson graph. And working with those, um, I was able to prove upper bounds for big Ramsey degrees of the triangle free Henson graph. Okay. So what I really proved was that given a diagonal anti-chain in that diagonal coding tree and a finite coloring of the copies of that diagonal anti-chain, there's going to be a subtree, which again represents a copy of the Henson graph. That's the important thing. That's why we're using coding trees in which all of the copies of C have the same color. And if you do this, then you get indivisibility as a direct corollary. Okay, so a key step in this proof is the following analog of the halpern likely theorem. So of course, a level set pigeonhole principle. So a level set is just a set of nodes which all have the same length. And we fix a subtree A of our ambient tree T. We fix a level set X, which end extends A, and we want to color all of the copies of X extending A into two colors. So then we're going to make a subtree, which again represents the Henson graph in which all of the copies of this level set X have the same color. So the three challenges for this are one, to find good starting nodes for building your subtree, because if you start in the wrong place, you're sunk before you do anything. Secondly, we want to make sure we build our subtree so that all of the copies of X have the same color. And thirdly, we want to make sure that our subtree that we end up with actually codes the Henson graph again. <laughs> so um, forcing, if you do it um, with care, it will take care of the challenges one and two. Challenge three, you actually do by hand. And the force thing also helps build an intuition about what sorts of structures are, are necessary in regards to the big Ramsey degrees, because the things that are necessary are things that you have to take into consideration when you're making your forcing partial order. Okay, so this is forcing a level set pigeonhole principle. Our forcing is adding kappa branches to this tree, but in a judicious way, it's not just all subsets. And so say we've got this fixed part of our tree and we want to color copies of this triple X. So X is a coding node and two nodes extending left and one node extending right. So we may have a blue copy of X here. We may have a red copy of X here. And our forcing is going to find, it's going to guarantee to you that there is a node where you can start getting a subtree of the right color. Then there's parts where you have to build things by hand to make sure you actually get a tree coding a Henson graph. And then there's another level where you're going to again have copies of X. And they might have, you know, different colors. So you force to extend 
to get all of the copies of X extending this original X to have the same color. Okay, so there's a lot more details that go into that, but that's the idea of how the forcing argument works to get your pigeonhole. So a, mo a small modification to those trees then ex uh, yields exact bounds. And so this theorem of exact bounds for um, the triangle free Henson graph was found independently by myself and by Balko, Hodonsky, Kubitschka, Konieczny, Vena, and Zucker around exactly the same time. Um, and the characterization involves diagonal antichains. And then what's new, what, what you don't see in the rationals or in the radiograph is that the beginning of forbidden structures in the enumeration never gets lost. That information is always there forever once you've made your enumeration. And so beginnings of coatings of triangles are what? It's going to be a vertex and then two branches of your tree, which are both coating edges to that same vertex. Then if you extend one with a vertex, the other one cannot have an edge with that vertex because that would code a triangle. Okay, so this is a precise characterization of the big Ramsey degrees for Henson graphs. Um, I think I will leave this in the slides so that if you're interested, you may look back on it. Um, but it's basically saying what was on the previous slide. The thing you have to work look out for is how are triangles, beginnings of triangles built, make them happen as slowly as possible, get rid of a few extra things that are not necessary, and then you have your exact bounds. Okay, so edge, edge um, big Ramsey degrees of edges have, are, are exactly two. This was Norbert Sauer's results. And these are the unavoidable patterns representing edges. So here's our leftmost path on the tree. And either the left vertex node can be higher than the right one or vice versa. And as the higher one passes the level of the lower one, there has to be an edge relation in the tree. And that's it for edges. So edges for the triangle free Henson graph have the same big Ramsey degree as in the radiograph, which is interesting. But if we go to non edges, um, we're going to get five unavoidable patterns. And this is because these codings of beginnings of triangles give you some unavoidable colorings that persist in every other sub Henson graph of your original one. So here we have our leftmost edge. Maybe you have a non-edge because the higher vertex extended past the right vertex on the leftmost branch. Otherwise, maybe they both branched off the left path at the same time. And then we have sort of a radiograph idea here. Or they branch off the leftmost path at different times. And then you can finagle them to have common edges with a common vertex. So you can get rid of some more um, non-essential uh, similarity types. Okay, so some developments of the coding trees enforcing. Um, so using the methods from the triangle-free graph, I was able to prove um, upper bounds for k-click-free Henson graphs and recover indivisibility with that approach. And then there are some infinite dimensional Ramsey theory theorems, which means you're doing analogs of galvin prickery but for your structure. You're taking subspaces of the bare space. You're looking for when are Borel subsets of the space Ramsey. Uh, this one, this 2020 paper with Colson and Patel, we isolated an amalgamation property, which we call substructure disjoint amalgamation property. And it, if your structure satisfies it, then you get exact big Ramsey degrees, which are characterized just by diagonal antichains. So this um, recovers the work of, of Laflamme, Sauer, Vuksanovich, and Devlin. And um, then these two red ones are on another slide I will talk about. Okay. So 
knowing that triangle free graphs could be handled in a Ramsey theoretic manner also led to developments not using forcing. And so there have been a couple, uh, several really, this, this is not everything, but this is some highlights. Um, category theory uses by Mishulovich and De Silva Barbosa and extensions to parities of gr greater than two. So this is the first work on structures with relations of arity greater than two. And um, then this work of Hubitschka made a new methodology because he used Ramsey space of parameter words to find upper bounds for big Ramsey degrees of the homogeneous partial order and gave also the first non-forcing proof for triangle-free graph, triangle-free Henson graph. Okay, and then that opened up this work and, and things in this area are ongoing. Okay, so the free amalgamation classes, um, a structure is called irreducible if any two vertices in it are in some relation. So for instance, a K clique or a complete tournament, or if you have say two binary relations and you call one red and one green, you could forbid all triangles with two green edges and one red edge. Free amalgamation classes are exactly those of the form forbidden of some script F, where script F is a set of finite irreducible structures. So in this work of Andy Zucker, he used coding trees and forcing and developed some new methods which are able to handle simultaneously all binary and unary free amalgamation classes with finitely many forbidden irreducible substructures. So this, um, this recovered the Henson graph results. Um, and starting from that, we went on to characterize the exact big Ramsey degrees of those free amalgamation classes in finite languages with relations of arity at most two and finitely many forbidden finite irreducible substructures. So what are the keys of the characterization? We have again, diagonal anti-chains. Those never seem to go away. Controlled splitting levels and controlled coding levels have precursors in the work on the triangle free graphs. And then controlled age changes um, are where you have incremental changes in how much of a forbidden structure is coded at a given level. And then something called controlled paths, which only matter if you have some non-trivial unary relations. So big question is when does the Ramsey property for a class of finite structures imply big Ramsey degrees for its associated homogeneous structure. More specifically, if we let K be a Freise class with finitely many relations and a finite constraint set, and K has the Ramsey property or there's some finite, um, <clears throat> finite expansion of the language so that it has the Ramsey property, then when in this situation is it guaranteed that it's related homogeneous structure, that is its Freise limit, um, having finite big Ramsey degrees. So the key ingredients that we know for most things so far are diagonal anti-chains and new pieces of forbidden substructures. Those should be in play when, when they are. And we've got a million ongoing investigations. I mean, that's probably a little bit of um, exaggeration, but <laughs> there's probably at least 40 <laughs> going on right now. Um, so we're looking for non-forcing proofs for forbidden substructures. And this, starting with this work of Jan Hubitschka, is ongoing with a large group. And there's a lot of progress being made there. Um, Hubitschka has given some talks on this at the ASL meeting and at the uh, ultra math meeting in Pisa last month. Um, relations of arity three or more was begun 
in this work on the three regular hypergraph, and it is continuing uh, for more and more and more structures. And something, another aspect of um, this study is reverse mathematics, which was taken up by Anglais Doriak, uh, Cholak, Jafarov, Monin, and Peti. And they really did some fundamental work on both computability aspects and reverse math aspects, so much so that their work turned into an MS memoir, which probably will be published in next year. Then there are model theoretic aspects, um, which are both, which are many and varied. And so there are, um, you know, model theoretic aspects in terms of amalgamation properties, and then in terms of um, classification theory. Um, much more work needs to be done on the topological dynamics correspondence, thanks to Andy. Zucker, it's been begun, needs to keep going. And then finally, um, this infinite dimensional Ramsey theory, which is looking for subspaces of the bare space where all of your structures, uh, where, where every point is a structure and you're looking for winner Burrell Sutz Ramsey or something similar to that. Okay, so that ends my talk. And I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you for the thank you for the talk. We do have a couple of minutes for a short question or two. Are there any questions? So I assume there is no question from the audience. Maybe I will ask in, in the question that you asked, Natasha, is there a natural, so what you are asking when, is there a natural condition that you have in mind? Yeah. Um, well, it, it seems that as long, it, it's very possible that as long as your language is finite, and you have finitely many forbidden substructures uh, that we, you know, and Ramsey property holding should imply finite big Ramsey degrees. I'd be okay. very surprised if that's not true. Mm -hmm. ah, so it's very general. It's, 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 it should hold always essentially. Okay. It's very interesting. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If uh, I, if there are no more questions, uh, let's let's thank Natasha again. And uh, this concludes the session. Thank you. Thank you.